I am determined to use math to help get this place in order. So the first thing I'll do is I'll take all of these gifts and I'll rearrange them into groups based on size. Then I'll measure some paper, wrap the gifts, pack them up and have them ready by, oh, five o'clock, just in time for the overnight delivery pickup. You see, math is a way of thinking of things. It helps us find solutions to our problems. Unless, of course, you're only focusing on the problem, and in that case, you'll only end up going in circles. And that's what happens at first to the girl in this book. It's called Math Curse. Math Curse. By John Sheska. Plus Lane Smith. Narrated by Michelle Trachtenberg. On Monday in math class, Mrs. Fibonacci says, you know, you can think of almost everything as a math problem. On Tuesday, I start having problems. I wake up at 7.15. It takes me 10 minutes to get dressed, 15 minutes to eat my breakfast, and one minute to brush my teeth. Suddenly, it's a problem. If my bus leaves at 8, will I make it on time? How many minutes in one hour? How many teeth in one mouth? I look in my closet, and the problems get worse. I have one shirt, three blue shirts, three striped shirts, and that ugly plaid shirt my Uncle Zeno sent me. One. How many shirts is that all together? Two. How many shirts would I have if I threw away that awful plaid shirt? Three. When will Uncle Zeno quit sending me such ugly shirts? I'm getting a little worried. Everything seems to be a problem. I take the milk out from my cereal and wonder, how many quarts in a gallon? How many pints in a quart? How many inches in a foot? How many feet in a yard? How many yards in a neighborhood? How many inches in a pint? How many feet in my shoes? Mrs. Fibonacci has obviously put a math curse on me. Everything I look at or think about has become a math problem. I tried to get on the bus without thinking about anything, but there are five kids already on the bus. Five kids get on at my stop, five more get on at the next stop, and five more get on at the last stop. True or false? What is the bus driver's name? The whole morning is one problem after another. There are 24 kids in my class. I just know someone is going to bring in cupcakes to share. We sit in four rows with six desks in each row. What if Mrs. Fibonacci rearranges the desks to make six rows, eight rows? Three rows, two rows. I'm about to really lose it when the lunch bell rings. Unfortunately for me, lunch is pizza and apple pie. Each pizza is cut into eight equal slices. Each pie is cut into six equal slices. And you know what that means, fractions. If I want two slices of pizza, should I ask for one-eighth, two-eighths, or two slices of pizza? What is another way to say half of an apple pie? Two-sixths, three-sixths, la moi de un ta au pomme. Which tastes greater? Half a pizza, half an apple pie. In art, we finally get to relax with a connect-the-dot picture. Here's my picture. Too bad it turns out to be a connect the ancient Mayan numerals picture. I stagger out of school. I'm a math zombie now. What if this keeps up for a whole year? How many minutes of math madness would that be? What's your problem, says my sister. 365 days times 24 hours times 60 minutes, I snarl. I think I'd better go to bed. Then the problems really begin. I dream I'm trapped in a room with no doors and no windows. 
The room is covered with a lifetime of problems. I only have one piece of chalk. How do I get out? I'm about to give up and die. When the answer to my problem comes to me. Fractions. I break the chalk in half. Then I put the two halves together. One half plus one half equals one hole. I put the hole on the wall and jump out. I'm free! I wake up on Wednesday morning at 7.15. It takes me 10 minutes to get dressed, 15 minutes to eat my breakfast, and one minute to brush my teeth. My bus leaves at 8. What time will I be ready? 7.41. No problem. I've broken the math curse. I can solve any problem, and life is just great! Until science class, when Mr. Newton says, You know, you can think of almost everything as a science experiment. <laughs> Take a look at this. I think I've got the situation worked out. Huh? Now, watch this. <laughs> Perfect. When you realize that math is a way to solve problems, you begin to see it as a cure, not a curse. Math guides you through countless situations every day, whether you're aware of it or not. Well, think about it. How have you used math today?